And here's an important term that you ought to know about. It ties in with the Tom Selleck ad and others we looked at earlier. And it's known as magical child syndrome. In technical language, it's called animism. But actually, animism is, a, is in a way uh, not a very correct uh, way to put it. Because animism is actually, uh, can be in many ways a positive thing. Psychologists, therefore, prefer to use magical child syndrome. It's basically Freud's understanding of the pleasure principle. Uh, that you may, may be uh, an adult walking around, but psychically, psychologically, you're basically still, a, still an infant and crave infantile things. And of course, the media is always putting up infantile models in front of us in order to lure us into that state of consciousness. Again, a pre-rational, pre-critical state of being. It's nothing more than regression, and it can happen on a social level as well as an individual level. Um, it's also called autism in the true meaning of that word, an autistic level of consciousness. And as I said, Freud's pleasure principle. And in the pleasure principle, to define that more correctly, it just means that gratification is no longer delayed. And most people will think that that doesn't mean very much. In fact, in psychological terms, it's all important because in the delay of gratification, that is how civilization is born. In being able to postpone our gratifications and work towards it and even earn our rewards in life. This is how the whole of civilization rose. The person who is unable to do that, unable to delay their gratification or sublimate, remains on the infantile level. This is also defines uh, many people within the criminal class who still are at this autistic level. But uh, the English actor, for instance, Simon McCorkendale, found out firsthand about the state of decay in America. He worked in America, was working in films, and finally was told by ABC that he was not what they call an eight o'clock actor, which meant that at the time of night, they didn't want viewers watching someone who sounded intellectual or who had an accent alien to their ears and therefore would be hard work when it came to listening. So we have to ask ourselves, if they don't want intellectualism and they don't want sophistication, what do they want? And who's making these decisions? What kind of uh, mentality are they catering to? And there's so many other horror stories that people within the media can tell you, just like that experience. And again, we come back again and again to the whole idea of the subconscious mind. It's about the anatomy of consciousness that we have to discover and learn about in order to crack this. Dr. Lechner, in his book Subliminal Advertising and Modern Day Brainwashing, says that advertisers use subliminal techniques to influence the second and third level of consciousness. They target the consumer's fears and desires, manipulating them in ways never thought possible. On the other hand, advertisers present to the consumer on the conscious level a safe, neutral, naturally appealing ad to pacify the consumer's resistance to subliminal advertising. So it's a strategy. At the same time as you attract the person and uh, make their pseudo self feel good and feel okay and feel right, you have to be constantly working behind the back to eviscerate what is real and what is moral and what is true. Lechner goes on to say that while glancing through an ad, the average consumer block reads paragraphs and barely notices an ad that they've seen many times. This is prime time in subliminal reception because the conscious mind is uninterested in the potentially offensive subliminal material. Key writes, to be effective, propaganda must constantly short circuit all thought and decisions. It must operate on the individual at the level of unconsciousness, critical judgment disappears altogether. Well, that's right. The basic desires, the limbic level, the pre-rational states, or what the Vedic um, societies, in Vedic schools of thought, they call the lower chakra drives. There's nothing wrong with appetite when it's kept in check. There's nothing wrong with anything unless it's taken to extremes. But often, the vices that we have were once virtues taken to extremes. I want, I want, I want. You get, you get, you get. Simple language, cut up small, sound bites, phonemes, talismanic words, 
to bypass the conscious circuitry or just a blatant uh, appeal to the narcissistic self like we said the pseudo self which is not the same as true selfhood but what is the result of all of this what's the fallout what happens when we don't get those uh, approvals we need what happens when we don't uh, get the expectations when we're not living up to that image what about the dependency, the delinquency, the depression, the eating disorders, and, uh, and even the suicide rates? Look at the fallout in our societies today. What's it caused by? What's the consequences? Where is society heading?